The Tour of the Lake District is a 96 mile circuit starting and finishing in the popular tourist town of Ambleside. The trail takes in each of the main Lake District valleys, along lake shores, through woodland and over remote mountain passes. Join me as I take on this winter Lakeland adventure with a mix of freezing wild camps and cosy country pubs. Woo! Sun shining! Hello, we're back! Welcome to day four of the Tour of the Lake District. In the distance there is Keswick and I'm just, I got back on the trail where I left it, if you remember, last week. I had to jump off the trail to, uh, this was revving chainsaw doing a bit. I had to jump off the trail to get to the airport to pick Fern up and then I had some, I had to see some family and do some bits and pieces which I've done. And I've come back up and joined the trail. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> yes, we're back. Ah, oh, look at this, mate. Welcome back. Forecast a bit of snow as well in the next few days, so that's summer. I'll be wild camping as well. No, mate, you're right. Sounds like you're happy with your surroundings. Oh, just as a dog with two dicks, mate. Don't get run over. I oh, know that'd be less happy, would it? If I got. To down Plowed down. Yeah, I'm off to Ambleside. Oh, yeah, we're back. Yeah, Busy up here, isn't it? Walking, right? Got me. Are going Yeah. How long take you? Uh, three days, I reckon. Over to Grasmere, then Patterdale, and over Red Screes and over at top. So, <laughs> hey, you having it? <laughs> Good lad, you. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. Wild camping, obviously. Yeah, oh yeah, I've got all me, got my house on my back, yeah. Uh, but I started off in Ambleside, it's a big loop. Right. The Tour of the Lake District, it's called. So I wild camped first night, and then all, it all got frosty in tent, it was like an igloo. So then I slept in an ale house on the second night, just to get a bit warm and have a few pints. It's supposed to be minus five or six tonight, like. I know, it's going to be nippy. It's going to be nippy, mate. All I can say, good luck to you, lad. All oh, right, well, yeah, I get you. knuckles. Good on you, lad. <laughs> good man. All the best. Yeah, cheers, mate. See ya. <laughs> there you go. All the best from my mate. Ah, oh. you heard it here first. Minus five or six, and that's down here. So it's going to be very, very cold, <clears throat> and even colder up tops. And I don't know where I'm going to end up or where I'm camping. It's just one of them where. Wherever I am at end of day, that's where I'll rest my head, but I'm going to try and camp a little bit lower down just to keep out of them frosty, frosty conditions. <laughs> Don't need to, mate. I believe it's a chaffinch. Medic. Right, what have we got here? Oh yes, it's one of these, look with counterweight on. That's how we like it. What have we got round to the side? Oh yeah. Pretty basic. Just let it go. Look, let look, you can't manually close it. You've got to let the counterweight do what it was put there to do. Stunning. Hey up, Robin! Ah oh, lovely stuff, mate. Good sash on that, mate. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Castle Rig Stone Circle is one of Britain's earliest stone circles dating back to the Neolithic period four and a half thousand years ago. The original purpose of the site is unknown. Three stone axes have been discovered inside the circle. In the Neolithic period, axes were made from volcanic stone quarried from the fells. Other possible uses are a meeting place for social gatherings, a site for religious ceremonies and rituals, or even an astronomical observatory with the stones being aligned to the sun, moon and stars. What have we got here? Have we got a counterweight on this one? Of course we do. Well, it's not as heavy though. What is it? A dry old... Oh, that, <laughs> that's light, light as well. It's not going to do job, is it? Go on, lad. I believe in you. Absolute. You're a good kid. Only because... 
<laughs> Only because I've seen a bin. You can't, I've talked about this on my videos before, but it's only because there's one here. Or if it's something like that, or if it's just one little bit here and there, I'll chuck it in my bag or in a bin or whatever, but you can't feel guilty if you leave stuff when you're out, because otherwise, where do you draw a line? You just end up becoming a bin man, don't you? Picking everything up and that, so a lot of it you just got to let it go, but occasionally, chuck it in, look at that. There was a bin right next to where Chris Packet was and I've run over there. You know, he's already out here to tell me I'm going to have a good time. Everything's going to be okay. Good lad. He's doing hike with me. Come on, mate. I'll get you a chest pouch. Here we are. I've got a squealer. Oh, that is... I mean, and it's missed the mark as well, look. So not only do we have that horrific squeal, we've got to put shoulder work in as well. Tut, tut, tut. Luckily, it's kind of frozen up a little bit underfoot, so uh, not as boggy. Oh, that's good. Keep these trotters dry as long as I can today. It's a losing battle, but so far, so good. Regard A. Oh, so right, here's my thing that I, my conundrum that I had. If you'll hear me out, guys. And it was a genuine, you know, I mulled over this for um, a good couple of days. Because uh, I didn't know what the right thing to do was, right? So, as we know, I left the trail in Keswick, went and did the bits and pieces that I had to do. My conundrum was this, when I first set off, I packed my bag for the weather as it was when I set off so I knew it was going to be a mixed bag a bit rainy a bit whatever packed accordingly now despite what it looks like now the temperatures have dropped dramatically and when I've checked the forecasts we're due minus way minus five and snowfall and so my conundrum was, do I pack accordingly for that? And you might be thinking, uh, well, yeah, of course you do, you sausage. It's, uh, yeah, of course you pack for the snow. It's, it's a no-brainer. But let me just take you through this gate, guys, because look, it's spring-loaded. The views, you can't. Look at it. If this is good, this is going on very nice. I know you appreciate, look at how the light bounces off this beautiful patina from, oh, it's good, it's good, and that spring is, oh my, there's a lot in that spring, let's let go, oh yeah man, look at it, and then you've got your views, hold that thought, I'll be back, I'll be back to chat, I'm just going to do a, I'm going to do something for Latch and Locks, you go over to Latch and Locks if you want to see the live one of these, and so, where was I? Yeah, you might be thinking, right, yeah, of course, take your, take your snow spikes, take your snow axe, take extra clothes and prep for it, but I was thinking, well, that's not, it's not really fair because I set out with this backpack packed up as I was going to do the tour of the Lake District. I did a what's in my bag video for it, and I packed accordingly knowing that the weather is very changeable in the Lake District and it could have just turned on me at any point and I'll have had to have had what I've got and so with that mindset I thought I'm not going to bring extra clothes and warmth I'm not going to bring me snow gear even though <laughs> I know it's going to be snowing and you can see snow up tops because I want to stay true to to the original kit that I set off with and that's what I've got I've got everything that I set off with on me again with the addition of and oh this is the only thing my gloves, I had them to bring and I forgot them. And I was gonna buy some in Keswick anyway because my fingers were hurting. So I just thought, save me sell a few pennies, bring me gloves. And uh, that's it. And I was just chewing it off. I was like, oh, but if I bring me spikes and everything, that's cheating in a way, isn't it? Because I've not set off with it. You know, then I, that, what's to say that any other long distance hike I do, I can't just jump off trail and just resupply with all my new gear. And it's just, 
I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that. That's fine. You tailor it to your own, your own adventure, don't you? But for me, it's just. I would rather get to end knowing that I've got the stuff that I originally set off with because that was the plan to begin with. Why am I justifying it to you? I don't know. Have I lost sleep over this? Yes. Is there something wrong with me? Possibly. Oh, look at it. That is trubsy FC, isn't it? Right, we're going to go around because... I mean, day three, I'll be going through that, like, with wet feet, don't care, but... I want to preserve my uh, dry tootsies. Please don't stack it, please don't stack it. Right, here we go, yes. Whoa, another, I mean, it's a bit, it, oh, it's copy and paste off the other one, but more, that's more worn. Is it as, oh, that's not as nice. You see how that's got more of a, that's not as, oh no. Do you see, there's a lesson here, look. Two gates, oh, it's not even fully clunk clicked all the way through. And there you go, look, two gates. To the untrained eye, identical. You might walk through these two gates and not bat an eyelid, but to an aficionado and someone who cares passionately about particularly this section of a gate, you can see it's night and day, guys. It's night and day. I think Gaffer's done this one over here, the good one, and then Apprentice has been like, well, I'll do this one, mate. You've seen me do it thousands of times, lad. I'm going to trust you and you can do this one. He's done it, but... Uh, Gaffer would have been like, oh, that's not quite right, but I'm not going to make you do it again because time is money and we've got others to do, so I'll let you off. But And he's like, no one's going to know, they're only just ramblers, aren't they? We know, guy. And I'm starting to raise awareness and put eyes on work, shoddy work like this, and soon there'll be nowhere to hide. <laughs> that's just it, truth. It's just spitting bars. Are you having that? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to milk this because I know that it's going to get worse, mate. After when we get up tops, because I'm over at tops as well. It's going to snow, it could rain. So I'm just appreciating this while it's, while it's like this. What a glorious way to start the second half. Please just remember this, how happy I am at this beginning bit, because <laughs> I can tell you this. There are going to be times where I'm going to have to dip into this well that I'm filling now as a source of happiness later on down the line. So I'll best do me, do my best to fill the well up. Oh no. What is this, guys? Medic! I can't even. Look at this, look. Rusted up. Nice shine on there, look, nice, that is smooth. That's stunning, actually, look at that. That's just been, that's use. It's a shame, mate, you still, I can see you were once glorious. I mean, you do a job. No, you don't, actually, look at all the sheep that have gone through there. Oh, well, take knackers yard for you, lad. You see, I've come down here, and this little squiggly line's where I've gone in and uh, done my little naked ritual around Stone Circle and I've come back and instead of going down here I've carried on and I'm currently off this track here which and then I'll meet up there and just a little bit of map time there for you nice nice and peaceful good acoustics as I was going down there I saw a sign that said teas, coffees, toilets and everything 100 yards this way so I was just going to double back on myself and go and get a brew because even though I started a little bit late today you got to have a brew, haven't you? you got to have a brew I do have to I, I have some I could be getting back from it I'm, I've got a bit best man at my mate's wedding and they're having a uh, a wine tasting thing around at his house to test the like wines for wedding which should be fun but my priorities is this hike and things have changed it's no longer about getting to the start line and because i've conquered that i feel very strongly now i've changed my mind and i now it's goal destination he's getting back to ambleside and completing the loop oh is it is it the journey who knows i think we'll uh 
it's a mixed bag in it because obviously it's sort of like two halves this this hike we've never really done it before like that so i guess at the very end of the series if i get to the end we'll have a final thought and we'll see what i've learned and whether you can vicariously learn through me that's closed that was a waste of time <sighs> let's deploy these it's getting quite steep so i've deployed the old hiking poles and some beautiful views <laughs> walking past people watching me mate they think I'm off me nut right so I'm following this down here and then my path there's a path that goes up here that's not me I'm gonna cut along and round here and there is Derwent Water in the distance the end of Derwent Water and it's lovely, I love this stuff, I've said it before, it's just <laughs> when it's not boggy but it's kind of soft underfoot, it's not slippy, it's perfect hiking. Derwent Water here, Bastwick, the next one along, it's still glorious, just enjoying it, we've just had a good section there where it's just mint noodle just hiking as i like it and i'm back i'm back slowed down my pace i'm not <laughs> i'm not so giddy now that giddy beginning bit man it's like ah if you could bottle that speaking of bottling it i didn't go for a swim in there did i last time because bottled it but there's no way on God's green earth, am I missing out the chance of a wild swim on this one? It's good to be alive. It is good to be alive. Let's get a little art shot of this puddle, look. Because, here we go, watch. Here you are. Bit puddle, filmmaker. <laughs> hey, filmmaker at Yearwood. On that note, like if you're watching this, The Great Outdoors magazine, I don't want to be, in fact I might email them, I don't want to be in runnings next year for it. I just don't want it. It was amazing to win it and uh, and it was amazing that it was voted for by you. What? But um, I don't want to be in it next year because I don't want to have to think about it. And um, it's becomes like a popularity contest, doesn't it? Where... You're just going online being like, please could you vote for me, could you vote for me? And I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So if you're watching TGO Outdoors magazine, please kindly remove me from the nominations. Let some, let other people have a go, because I'm happy with one win, one in and out, one win out. In and out. And uh, I've ret retired. <laughs> I'm retired, undefeated, that's the best way, innit? Floyd Mayweather did. There's no wind at all. I hope it's like this tonight. When I camp up, you can see all the steam or smoke or whatever it is pretty much rising vertically, so you can tell there there's no no breeze at all. <laughs> Stunning man, stun sized Mars bar. Oh, that's heavy that. That's no log, that is a proper counterweight. Just what I like to see. Right, smooth. The views are there, aren't they? Look at that. See if we get a good acoustics on clunk click. <coughs> Stupendous. Uh, big up Robin Hood. This is a real beautiful bit man, just cutting up by the side of this stream, through the woods, beautiful little bridge I'm about to cross. I got chatting with some old folks back there and um, 
one of the blokes is like, oh, you've got it in for you. Like, I told him I was going to be uh, wild camping for the next couple of nights, and he did say, he's another one that said about there's the, the, the cold spells coming and snow's coming with it, so... As I said before, let's just make the best of this. Leave you by the fire Be here in my arms Even when the embers die We'll keep shining on Be here at my shoulder be here in my side Be here when the cold night falls And in the morning light Be here when the cold night falls And in the morning light I'll gear this one because look what we got. Oh yeah, gravity. Go on, go on, lad. Ah, oh, just ain't got, haven't got quite got the minerals, has it? Beautiful little bridge, this man. Goofed a bit there, but never mind. At least I got to walk over this nice bridge. And it's this nice bridge that sent me the wrong way because. I was like, oh, that's a lovely little bridge. It's got to be that way, hasn't it? No. Wrong. It's this way. Back up top. It's been nice down here. A really lovely stretch by that river. Loads of gates. Can't bring you them all. There's too many. It's very nice. I'm going up this steep beast here. Nice little ascent out of there to get the old blood pumping. Yeah, it was pretty flat for a while by that lake, by that stream, river, whatever you want to call it. So it's nice to get a bit of firing legs. I won't be saying that in a day or two, but for now, let's have you. And I'm back up, but we're definitely out here up to feel it. Feel the chill in the air, and it is a chilly one. There's ice on the floor. I'll show you just, well, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Guys, you ever seen this stuff, look? It's when water becomes almost like glass and slippy ice. That shit bants because, because uh, I just walked up that big hill and uh, it's knocked the bants out of me. I'm gonna try and keep it low, try and keep my wild camps a bit lower than on tops because it's not, I've only got Lanshan too, it's not like I'm in a, you know, a four season tent. It's on it Lanshan too. And if winds get up and snow comes, <laughs> Lanshan too might Lanshat itself too. It's just these little valleys that have been farmed and the grass that has been like the pastures is just such a, brighter more vivid green than everything else and it just leads your eye up through that little valley beautiful composition guys <sighs> chuffed mate chuffed as a ferret with two teats i've gone too far there if i'm honest that is oh, i've gone too far that's it that's just it <laughs> Can't be doing that on hills, mate. Come on. Rothwaite. It means the clearing in the cairn. We'll go see what the delights of Rothwaite have got to offer. 
Ash. <laughs> and then we'll see what happens from there. I am definitely wild camping tonight though. You're not going to be cutting to me in little granny room. Well guys, the thing is guys, I uh, <laughs> I needed to uh, charge my uh, my GPS thing, so a little g -g 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 Bike guide, but there's four days left, four, four more sections, so four days hiking, which <laughs> I'm optimistically going to do in uh, like two and a half days, two nights basically, and then back to Rivers and Anna's house for a little a little uh, wine taste that's extra information that you didn't need to know because you just <laughs> you might be coming on here just to check out the hike the tour of the lakes hike not knowing that i'm off to go drink wine at my friend's house over sharing is caring that's what they say uh, i'll tell you what though so far today let's talk about hiking shall we it has been glorious the weather has been perfect the scenery has been delightful there's been such a contrast of uh, like woodland and moorland and we've been up tops we've been next to water and it's still not over there's been plenty of gates i've just look at that right on cue look come on i mean i did say there was plenty of gates Ugh. no i don't there's sometimes I don't even want to show it. I'm like, don't look at it. Because I don't want to, I don't want to upset you, but it's sad times, mate. I'm going to have to put a bit of sherbet on it as well to get it up into. Oh, wow. Not even, not even a little bit of sherbet. Okay. Oh, I just can't look at it, mate. No. Oh, stick it in rear view mirror. Man, I'm thirsty because I know I'm thirsty because I'm looking at that water down there and being like, mm, mm, mm. what's this? <gasps> I'm bringing Hazel Bank. Yuma Country House Hotel. Oh, that's beautiful, mate. And all, you know, on a diff, it's sliding doors on a different day, in a different way. <laughs> I might have got into Hazel Bank. Excuse me. Can I have a room and a pint of whatever you're having? <laughs> wow. Now that is gin clear. Looks like Royal Oaks cacked it. Royal Oaks cacked it. Let's see if Scarfellow Hotel's got out going on. Riverside Bar. Hello. Just to reiterate guys, I am not staying. I'm wild camping, no matter what. I'm not going in here, <laughs> getting on the swill, and then staying in honeymoon suite. <laughs> With a bottle of Prosecco and that. No, it's not what I'm doing. I'm just, oh there's a sign on door, I don't think it's open, but we'll see. What I'm doing is just wetting whistle. Just cutting the dust, you know what I mean? Cutting the dust. Because as parched, lad, parched. Uh, cutting the dust and we'll see what happens. Come on. Look at that. Pint, crisps. They do a homemade sausage roll. Oh, perfect. Look, guys. I was low on electrolytes. This has got electrolytes in it. This sausage roll, riddled with electrolytes. This, hey, look at grill there. Eh? <laughs> 100% electrolytes. Absent friends. That's smooth. That's so smooth. And also, it's a good time for me to re like just reflect on guidebook and have a little look about and that. And uh, maybe tell you some Norse words. Keswick, where we left uh, in Old English, means the cheese or dairy farm. Oh, Black Sail, remember we went over Black Sail? Black Sail Pass. In Old English Norse, the dark stream or bog. Now they call it sausage roll. Look at it, it's like a sausage wellington. He's done a good job there. He's done a good job on survival sausage roll. It's a bit big. Now to get gob round it. Are you gonna watch me eat? 
like a mukbang. Nice and nav. Let open fire going. <gasps> Robin just landed there. It's a sign. Do you want some seeds? Come back. Oh my god, can I get him to eat up my hand? Watch this. I'll give him a little selection look. Some seeds off the sausage roll, a little bit of meat and a bit of crisps. Can you hear him? Come back, Robert. Come on. You don't trust me like my Robert. It's a trust game. No, I'm eating it. Robins have been following me all day. And if you don't follow me on Instagram and you want to see my Robin, you can um, follow me there. I post every now and again because, in fact, if I had my way, it'd just be all dedicated to Robin. I might set him up his own Instagram page. Oh, just a quick stop. I've had my pint, my sausage roll, and bag of crisps. What's he got here? This is what I like. A bit of makeshift. There we are. Something a bit different. Jobs are good. One. I've joined the coast to coast path now, so I remember this slightly going up here. I'm going to be going up here to the left of Eagle Crag, up and round, and I'll try and get on tops. Getting chilly now. I know for a fact. It is extreme, well the guidebook says it, but I can also remember it is very boggy and there's lots of different routes to go. If it's poor visibility, it can be a nightmare up there. A bit of nostalgia for me here, because this is where I camped on my second night of the coast to coast in the igloo, the Lanshan One. Just by side at path, mate, because I was jenked and it was late on. This tablet was affixed by Douglas and Michael Boyle in enduring memory of their friend and companion Gordon Halworth who died in peace under the shelter of this rock in the early hours of Sunday 8th of January 1939. Wowzers. Rest in peace Gordon. Lovely, dry bit. Stick or twist, no. Stick or twist, twist. Climbing this thing here, up the side of it there. And from what I remember from coast to coast, it's a swine. Let's get up tops and roll dice. No deal, no. Let's do one of these. Hoi. <sighs> Woo. That was a tough, tough old slog. Look at it though. Oh, these snow capped mountains look like it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh my word. That was ruthless and everything was icy as well, so I really had to be mindful of where I was putting me, my feet. And so now it's over this way. Which looks bad and steep, but it ain't that. I think it plateaus out, and that's the boggy bit, though. So, how much light do I have? I'm <laughs> it's just gambling, isn't it? I've weighed it up. Temperatures are dropping, and I know for a fact because I've been that way before. <laughs> it's just a load of bogs and sods, you know, them big, big sods of earth. Not good for pitching tent on. I know that. So. Rather than get caught out that way, I'm going to stick here and all. Ground's frozen, so it's not boggy. I'll take it. I'm on path, like. Look, this little cairn. It's path where I've come up. No one's going to be up here now, and I'm away at crack of dawn anyway. Also, what they're going to do, people who are just hiking on this path aren't just going to be like, oh, he's in a tent, oh, boot him off end. Everyone's pretty sensible, aren't they, out here, I think, for the most part. Do it with hands, shall we? There she is. <laughs> Decent pitch, isn't it, look? I've got the delta pegs in all four corners. And then, again, just doubling up with, uh, with pegs on guy lines. 
just to be safe, uh, it's winter and things can change at the drop of a hat. I've not really moved in yet, I've just got the sleeping bag out so it can fluff itself up and then I'll pump my bed up and, and whatnot. But for now, I've got to go collect some water from somewhere. Might have to go back down there, which is bants. Look at this little trickle. That might take a while. Shit, everything's frozen. Not even hungry after my sausage roll, but water is a good thing. I might just even have a hot water. <laughs> Got no brews that we're here out, but hot water is good stuff. Shout out Fern for putting me onto hot water. Mate, this is arduous and painful. Needs be though, needs be. Home sweet home. Oh, that old boy was right. It's getting cold. Also, I'm just gonna have a cup of hot water. Woohoo! Hot water. Can it, man? Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> sing it, sing hallelujah. Get up here, shall we? Ah, come on. Look at that, man. <laughs> you can't see under. But I'm smiling like, don't you worry about that. Oh, come on. It's bloody beautiful. My little scarf's not playing up. He's, he's playing up a little bit, isn't it? Is he not entertained? I mean, it's good clobber, isn't it? It's very good clobber. Uh, look at that, man. It gives it such texture. The dusting of snow. It really makes it pop. I just uh, filtered my water and um, it's literally freezing as it's coming out. <coughs> I had a drink of it and it was shards of ice. I mean, I've sat on my sleeping bag, but I don't want any of me touching the ground because that just sucks all the heat out of me. And I'm going to put all my layers on now so that it stops the cold and I'm probably gonna even know am I gonna get out else let's have a look is there out to be had there's a little shiner there look but I can't do any night lapses or anything because obviously batteries are I need my batteries to make this amazing documentary <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just probably batten down the hatches blow airbed up and then uh, and just chill, I'll do some little, oh, I can't even do map time for you because I've created this map time where I've got these huge, you know this because you've watched them, this is episode four isn't it or whatever. Uh, I can't do map time because I do map time when I get back. We've even got Outkick cup. Didn't even bring me Torx cup, even though I love it even more. Right, let's see what this does in cold. <laughs> Those eyebrows nearly gone. The water keeps freezing, batteries are going, phone's dead. <laughs> but I'm gonna have this meal and just use it to warm my hands up. Whoa. Even that, I can feel warmth off it. Squash and sweet corn casserole. Just gonna have a couple of drops of uh, CBD oil, which just helps me sleep and just eases my bones and my muscles and stuff. He's a sound bloke who does this. He's been kind enough to give us a discount code. I'll whack it on the screen now. There's a link below if you want to go and check it out and get yourself a bit of a discount, then uh, please do. iPhone's too cold to even charge. <laughs> I mean, it's cold, like, really cold. It says it was going to be like minus five, minus six down bottom, so who knows, I don't have a thermometer, but it's freezing. I've got my uh, meal, my warm meal, under here against my organs and it's doing a grand job of warming me up so these meals they say eight minutes till it's done <laughs> i'm using it as a hot water bottle for let's say 20 minutes i'm just going to keep going until it's like lukewarm and get the most out of the heat from it top tip and then i'll eat it top tip it is a top tip eat your meals oh, get this in me it looks like shit oh there you are Pointless. 
Mm. That's nice. Warm food. <laughs> Hopefully will keep me warm through night. I guess there's not a great deal to report. <laughs> I'm just going to eat that and then I just exist for hours on end. <laughs> There's now what I can do. Right, I'm gonna chew this down and let's go to our fi everyone's favorite time, map time. And here we are. Welcome back to map time. So, we started in Keswick and off we went. Following the road, nice views back over Keswick from up here. Keep going. Now this is the way that the guidebook tells you to go, but you can do a little detour if you want just to check out these stone circles, which I did. And then, instead of going down this road, I cut through these fields here. And just to stay off the tarmac a little bit and then double back on the main road. And left the track again. Uh, Castle Rig Farm, that's where I went to try and grab me a brew, but it was closed. And off I carried on. Up here, again, it starts to open out here and get some lovely views. Across over here some lovely hiking to be done through here and lovely views again of Derwent water and off into the distance to Bastwaite Lake carried on coming down here across this little bridge which was in the guidebook bit of road work to be had up here but not too much and then you enter this woodland which was really nice and it was just a glorious day's hiking the sun was shining and it was ever changing so it just kept my mind occupied and we hit this, this was a beautiful stretch by the side of this river, plenty of gates to be had. All the way along, till we get to here, this is where I goofed a little bit here because there was a little bridge and I, I fancied the look of it. So I went over it and started going this way and then was like, hold on a minute. Double back, and a bit of a thigh pumper up here. Back onto the tops and back to some lovely views. Again, I was so lucky with the weather, it was glorious. Now we get to here and you're supposed to just cut straight across here and keep going but many people will want to stay in Rothway or grab a pint or whatever sausage roll and that's exactly what I did nipped in there had my dog roll bag of crisps and pint and then I joined on to the coast to coast so familiar territory up through Stonethwaite past where I camped on the coast to coast I mean it is uphill but it is gradual as well until you get to here and as you can see these contour lines on Linen Crag are uh, pretty steep so the final leg pumper of the day up onto a flat spot here that's where I camped with some amazing vistas ready for a cold night in the Lanshan too if you're not subscribed already consider subscribing hit the bell notification to be notified of the next upload and I'll see you all soon <laughs>